I was born in Harlingen. As I was growing up, my mom kind of like migrated us from Harlingen all the way up to Edinburgh, which is why I went to college. It was always my goal to be uh, very academic and like graduate top marks and like get into a good college and stuff. So I was originally supposed to go to school at St. Mary's College, which is in Indiana, and it's a sister school of Notre Dame. And I got accepted, and I got a scholarship, and I got work study, but uh, it was still too expensive. <laughs> Ultimately, like we decided that I couldn't go to that school, which was very heartbreaking. So then I just decided to go to school at UT RGB, which used to be UTPA at the time. <laughs> And uh, I became a business major and my uh, concentration was international business because I love traveling. So I told myself that I wanted to do business that involves me traveling. <laughs> and then it was getting time for me to graduate. And for some reason, I just felt unfulfilled. I felt like I had gone to school and learned out of a textbook and I just, didn't, I was not satisfied. So I was like, I'm gonna double major. Parts of it did help me because time management was something that helped me a lot. Like I was able to, like, if I could do something, I would say, oh, I have the time for it. But if I couldn't, I would be like, let me see if I can move things around and see if I can work with that. Um, also, it helped with like me being able to work with other people, like me being able to be like, okay, well, I see your point in this idea, but you know, maybe we can go with this idea and it might work a little bit better, or like those kind of things. Um, and it helped me, um, now it's helping me more because uh, when I had to shop manage, I have to keep a budget. So then it helped me more with like being able to be like, okay, well, this is how much you have for this sale. This is how much you have for this show and you can't spend this much. and. Uh, being able to budget things and scheduling and <laughs> all the other stuff. So it wasn't as, I didn't use it as much when I was first starting off because I was just focused on like uh, honing my skills and becoming better at whatever I was trying to do. Uh, and it's also sort of like helped me be able to take on more leadership roles because uh, you know, they make you take all these leadership classes and stuff. And so that like, if you want to move up, you know, like how to move up and stuff. And so I think that has given me a sort of a presence that make people trust me more. So that way they feel like if they want to give me more work, they know I'll get it done and stuff. So that took me into broadcasting. And then I uh, ultimately like had to graduate because financial aid reasons. So then I graduated without completing my second bachelor's. But I couldn't find a job in whatever my degree was, which is the thing that they always tell you when you're about to graduate. They're like, make sure you find something in your job, in your area, because like it's gonna be hard to find it once you're out there. And so that's exactly what happened to me. I was uh, in a standstill because there wasn't really anything around here that was in my field or what I wanted to do. I spent a whole year just working from job to job, doing temp jobs and uh, just trying to make a, a living. And then um, I uh, some family stuff happened. And uh, we ended up losing our apartment, so then uh, basically became homeless. <laughs> and so um, I ended up going to stay with a friend who I used to work with at the university when I had work study. And she was just like, well, I mean, instead of working, like, why don't you just go back to school and finish your second bachelor's? And I was like, why not? I mean, I'm not doing it. I'm just working right now. It's not like I'm going anywhere. So I just decided to, she helped me get back into school. And then like I got housing in the, um, on campus. And so then I moved on campus and I was able to go back to school and I started doing, uh, broadcasting again, but, um, I had to take an elective. So when I took an elective, I decided to take a makeup course because like, I was like, oh, I like makeup and I might as well just learn how to do that, right? <laughs> 
And so then I started doing it and I realized that I was really good at it because I'm really good at um, being crafty and having to do things with my hands. So I found that I was really good at it and uh, other people saw that I was good at it. And then I uh, really liked the whole atmosphere of the theater program. And yeah, and so then I started working in the costume shop and then um, started uh, meeting people and working on projects and like actually like doing things. Uh, and then I found out that I was good with hair too. So then I started doing that. <laughs> Um, and then like the first uh, show that I hair and makeup design, which was Dangerous Liaisons, which was a semester that I had switched to theater. So I was very happy that like the fact that I was just coming into the program, that they would actually like let you do something like that. Um, and so that's where I like sort of like took off and started doing all that other stuff in the theater. <laughs> So like taking that class is what actually like opened my mind to like, oh wow, there's people that do this for a living. <laughs> there's people that get paid for this and there's people that go to different places and uh, do this for a living. And like, I didn't even know that existed. <laughs> so like, that's ultimately what, what opened the door for me into theater and doing like hair and makeup and doing costumes. Well, like when I was young, I had always felt that I was creative. So like when I did join the theater program and I started to be more creative and take on more creative things, uh, it led me to build up my resume, which was something that like I, I had like a basic resume that just had like what you work at and like places you work at. But I never had like a resume that was like, I created this and I did this and and so then I started applying and applying and applying. I think I applied to like maybe like 40 theaters and I really only heard back from three. And, and still those three like made me feel like really great because, you know, some people put it off and they put it off and they never um, look out for other places or like they feel like they have a plan within, you know, things happen, life happens, I guess. Um, and so like, I really had to push myself and other people had to push me, uh, in order for me to feel like I had enough confidence to be like, okay, well maybe I didn't get that place, but that does not mean that I don't have skills or that I'm not a good stitcher or I'm not good at this, this, and this. And so that push led me to get those three places. And then those three places made me an offer. And I had a very tough decision because one place was in California, which is ultimately where I wanted to move and live and go to graduate school. And I thought like if I went there that I was gonna be step closer to doing that. And then another job was closer to where my mom lived. It was in Illinois. And they were gonna pay me more, they were gonna house me, and I was gonna get to work on more shows. And not just uh, plays, but musical theater as well, which is something I never really got to dip into. And so like, uh, <laughs> what my professor told me was make a pro and a cons, um, and one place had more pros and cons, and ultimately I decided to go with the job that was gonna give me more benefits. And then once I got the job, um, the connections that you make with those people, like that travels with you to other places because a lot of the actors that I worked at my first job, I've already met in another job that I've gotten. So um, building up your reputation and like meeting new people and networking, like that's gonna help, that helps me more uh, to get more jobs along the way. So um, yeah. <laughs> Last fall, I got a job at this theater in Missouri. It's called Maple's Repertory. <laughs> and um, when I went there, I didn't know what to expect. I um, had never shop managed a shop before. I had never done anything by myself. Like I was gonna be by myself. I was gonna be stitching by myself. I was gonna be a dresser by myself. I was gonna be taking care of the shop by myself. So, um, 
yeah, I had never just done something by myself. I always had someone there with me. And then um, it actually turned out to be a great experience. Like I did a pretty good job, um, but I was like, well, maybe they're not going to bring me back next year or whatever. Well, like comes summertime, um, they asked me to come back. And I was like, yes, I want to come back. Like I've never, I wasn't there during the summer and I really want to experience what it's like to be there during a summer. Um, because a fall season is short, is smaller than a summer season. They do less shows. Um, well actually they do the same amount of shows, but there's less people there. They have a smaller cast. So in the summer they had a bigger cast. And then, um, when I went, I immediately became friends with people in the shop. I became friends with all the actors. Um, people in the community were very nice and I became friends with people in the community. Um, uh, it was just a really good experience. Like it made me, it didn't make me homesick. Like it, it made me feel like, um, like everyone was happy to be a part of the experience and everyone wanted to be there and everybody was happy to be there. And it was just a really good experience. And then they asked me to come back again in the fall. And I was like, yes, I will totally come back in the fall. <laughs> and, um, you know, and then, you know, I came back in the fall and then like people knew me and people knew what I did and like they knew like who I was. And that was just really weird because like I had only spent a couple of months in this small little town, but everybody seemed to know like who I was and what I did for the theater. And it was just a really nice experience <laughs> for me. <laughs> and I know that like not as many other theaters are that way, but uh, it definitely like made me feel like uh, if I wanted to, I could ask one of those people like, hey, do you know if there's a job here and here? And they'll be like, yeah, totally. Like I know so-and-so and I'll give them your resume or I'll give you their contact information. And so like, that's, that's what I really liked about that experience. As I made a lot of friends. <laughs> the thing that I love about being able to travel now is the fact that I can take pictures where I go. And a lot of the things that I love to take pictures of is either like sunsets or very cloudy days or like something reflected on water and stuff. And like, I think that's really pretty. And other people that see it think that it's pretty too. And then, you know, then they were like, you should get into photography. And I'm like, well, I don't do it because like, I want to be a photographer. I do it just because it's a really pretty moment and I want to share it with people. And so that's, I think that's the same thing with whatever I do. Like if I do hair or do makeup or I do costumes like I want it to look visually pleasing because I want to share it with other people and then that goes hand in hand with the story and the directing and the lights and everything and then that's how it all comes to fruition and then people see it and they're amazed by it and they're like that makes you feel really good because at least you know it's visually pleasing and that's why they like it so I started working uh for a cruise line this uh, January. Um, first cruise, never had been on a cruise before, never been on water before. It was very interesting. I was very afraid of getting seasickness. Um, but uh, the first ship that I got on, we went to the Caribbean. So I went to like Barbados, Aru Aruba, um, Curacao, uh, and then all the like little small like places like St. Kitts and St. Lucia and like it was really pretty and I was like you know like I have I had never seen like aqua water before like really beautiful aqua water and like I was like that is my goal. I didn't get to go to the beach <laughs> because I was working but you know when I did get to get off I could like see you know people and see the areas and stuff and that was really fun and then um I, my next ship, I finally got to go to Asia, which was the highlight of my year. I think, I think that was like my favorite thing ever. Cause I got to go to Singapore and just like, it, it felt very much like the Valley though, because it's very humid and it rains and it was hot. <laughs> and so, um, it felt very much like here. So I felt very much at home, but it was just 
I have always loved cultural things. So I, I've always loved being able to go out and learn about different cultures. You know, when you're in one spot, you're used to specific type of people and you're specific to you, you, uh, you know, like there's a certain way of doing things all the time. And then when you go out, you like meet different people from different places and they have different types of ways of doing things, different types of ways of talking to people, different personalities and like being able to meet those people and like figure out like how you're supposed to talk to them and like, you know, find common grounds and like, you know, I don't know, be more outgoing and more open-minded, like that helps more, you know, because they come from different backgrounds and you come from a different background. And so, you know, uh, it's just interesting meeting different people. Like, so I went to get my hair cut for my birthday and I met this, uh, my hairstylist actually, she was from, I want to say Japan, but I could be wrong. And, uh, she was telling me that the reason why she was working on the ship was because she wanted to cut hair of people from different places with different hair types because her goal was to be a hairdresser in the 2020 Olympics. And I was like, that's some big goals there, but, <laughs> but that was like really amazing because like, I never thought of that. Like, I didn't know there were hairdressers in the Olympics, you know? So I was just like, Oh my gosh, like that's so interesting. But I mean, if I had never, taken that job, I would never have met that woman. I would never have been able to meet people like that or like people from Australia that sort of sound like British people, but are not British, <laughs> but are also like really rowdy and like really fun to hang out with. And, you know, like there was this one man that was just sitting next to me and all of a sudden he made me like this balloon dog. And I was like, Oh my gosh, like that's so sweet. I don't even know you. And you're like making a balloon dog for me. You know what I mean? So it's just, it's just interesting. Like being able to meet like different people 